I'm Shay Russell for mining.com.au and I'm here today at the Gold Coast Investment Showcase and joining me is Dr. Mike Jones, Managing Director of Impact Minerals. Mike, how are you? Great, Shay, and uh, great to be on the Gold Coast, your yeah. home uh, home office for you guys. The home office for me and plenty happy to have some sunshine, I can assure <laughs> you. I'm from a lot further down south. Uh, but we're not here to talk about uh, Melbourne and how cold it is right now. I want to talk about the fantastic news that's happening for the Lake Hope uh, High Purity Illumina project. That's, that's just not details that roll off the tongue. First and foremost, for everyone who's new to High Purity Illumina, talk me through it. What is it? So uh, it's uh, not very well known, but a crucial part of the energy transition. HPA is used in two major uh, parts of this uh, process that we're going through. The first one is it acts as a separator between the anode and the cathode in many battery architectures. And what it does is prevents heat buildup transferring from one end of the battery to the other. So if you recall, the Samsung phones were exploding a few years ago, and we see these amazing pictures of the Tesla cars catching on fire. That's because the separator isn't made properly, peels away, and bam, we get this thing called thermal runaway. So that's one big use, and obviously that's expanding over the next uh, decade. The second one is a bit more mundane. It's the, all the LED lights that you're seeing here. Yeah. They've all got HPA in them, high purity lumina. Uh, it's used as sapphire wafers in the back of these LED diodes, and also increasingly in semiconductors. So. If you see, for example, uh, smart screens, you know, so you're watching your ULEDs and your OLEDs, you go down to Harvey Norman, look at all those screens there, every one of them's got HPA in there. So, uh, and, and the demand for LEDs, you've probably seen the LA, uh, sorry, the Vegas dome, you know that yeah. big dome there, completely decked out in LEDs. So, wow. and those sort of things are being built globally. So. Fantastic area to be in. So that's that's what HPA is. Uh, I love this. So this is basically a critical mineral that nobody really knows how pervasive it is through all of our technology. Um, now you've had some great success with the Lake Hope uh, Purity Project, and I believe you just put out an announcement this morning. Uh, low carbon credits. Have I, have I got that right? You certainly I've got, have. I've, I've scribbled something down on my notes and <laughs> went. They, they don't make any sense. I oh, know. Well, look, as part of the energy transition, you've got to be very conscious of your carbon dioxide emissions, you know, in particular on the net zero 2050 uh, pathway that's been set ahead of us. And so people who don't know about the Lake Hope project, the material that we're going to mine is in the top two metres of a salt lake, mm. about, about 500 kilometres east of Perth, sort of in the middle of nowhere. And you can check out our announcements, but it's, uh, it's a, a very uh, low intensity process. We're basically going to mine the material on site and truck it and haul it off site, probably to Quinana in Perth near mm -hmm. the port and build the plant there. So you can imagine that, you know, in terms of the emissions on site um, of carbon dioxide, it's going to be very low. And obviously we're going to move towards uh, going from diesel, which is the current method, probably yep. to something like hydrogen or electric vehicles once oh, we start really mining, cool. hopefully within a few years down the track. And then similarly, down in the plant, you know, we'd be looking to do 100% renewables mm -hmm. um, on site. Currently, the electricity that we would use comes from the Southwest Grid, as it's called, the Swiss in WA, which is coal-fired currently, and mm -hmm. that's a source of many of the emissions that we currently have. Uh, but the WA government is committed to phasing that out and going to 100% renewables by 2030. So we'll see a progressive reduction in the emissions from that as we, uh, as we go forward. So um, we've been very conscious of that and we can talk about how it compares to other projects. Yeah, look, I'd love to. And I'd also just like to emphasise what you've talked about there. This is a really low impact project from an environmental perspective as well. Most people, when they think of mining, they think of enormous trucks coming in, digging big holes. But as you summarised, where you're touching the first two metres of the surface. This isn't a huge, uh, like it is a big project, but it is a low impact mining method. That's correct. I mean, the net present value is over a billion Australian dollars. So yeah. economically, it's a very large project. But the footprint uh, on this lake that we're going to leave is very small. There's going to be a hole only about a metre or two metres deep. And we've done some little test pits already, and it actually fills in. Um, you know, over time. And in a way, that deposit's actually still forming. So it's almost the ultimate renewable resource. It does take about a thousand years to renew, <laughs> but, but it will eventually fill in again and, uh, and form the material. So it's a very unique project in that sense. It certainly is. Now tell me, how does this stack up to uh, other projects? So HPA is currently manufactured by, dominantly by the Chinese and the Japanese. And they make their HPA by basically mining aluminium clays, mm -hmm. alumina clays, bauxite, uh, in, uh, and then process it through a thing called the Bayer process and then they get metal, aluminium metal at the end of that and then they convert that to high purity alumina. That 
it's very energy intensive and it produces a lot of toxic waste. The, the leftover metals from bauxite produce what are called red muds and a lot of people might be familiar, there's some very toxic material comes out of that. That is nothing to do with our process. The, the nature of our material um, is completely different mm -hmm. uh, and dissolves very easily in acid. So the carbon emissions from that process, the, al the alkoxide process incumbent producers, is sort of up in about the 12 tons per, of HPA produced. Yes. Okay. Alpha HPA, one of the leaders in this space, uh, probably about half that or less. We're on par with them using non-renewable technology, um, mm. power sources, and we believe that by the time we go 100% renewables, we'll be significantly less and on par with a small company in Canada that produces their HPA using hydroelectric power. So we're down there, it is world leading, you know, low carbon emissions, and we have a clear strategy now as to how to sort of eliminate those and go to net zero, hopefully by the time we start mining. Oh, fantastic. This story uh, just gets better and better with every announcement. Uh, listen, love what's happening down at Lake Hope. Mike, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks, Shay. Great to be here.